Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. I'm sitting in front of our canvas and some of the um, notions from By Annie and I have a whole bunch of different projects around me here that I want to share with you today and I'm sitting here looking outside and it is absolutely spectacularly beautiful out. It is uh, sunny. I think it's a bit cool but it is at least sunny which is really glorious and I think this might be the last weekend to be able to do anything outside before next spring. So um, I do have a little bit of outside work to do before we head to New Jersey next week for time with Bruce's family, uh, which is a tradition of ours over the Thanksgiving holiday. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But today's topic on Fabric Friday is really fun. I wanted to challenge myself and in the, at the same time answer a whole bunch of questions that we've been getting since we launched our collection of the heavier canvas, which is the 8.6 ounce canvas. And a lot of questions to answer as in, what can I do with the 8.6 ounce canvas that uh, is different from your lighter weight canvas or just your batik cotton? Um, is it suitable for making quilted jackets? Is it suitable for uh, travel bags and for purses? And, you know, a little bit more information about the differences between the 8.6 ounce and the 5 ounce canvas. And so I'm going to go through a little bit of kind of a, I did a little bit of a test lab kind of, kind of process this past week just to work with the canvas a little bit more to educate myself because it is so new to us as well. Just how do I, does it, does it feel different putting in a zipper? Does it feel different if I'm going to interface it with fusible interfacing? Does it get too stiff? How does, how does it react to all the different things that we do when we create? So whenever we're sewing a bag or a backpack or a quilted garment, whatever it happens to be. So here's what I'm going to start with. I quilted on our long arm the 8.6 ounce canvas. And my goal was to answer question number one, which is about pre-quilting fabric to put in a garment. So a pre-quilted jacket like the Tamarack jacket that I've um, sewn up and shown to you guys multiple times. And you know, how will the heavier canvas feel? Now, the one thing I can to really show you um, is that feeling. And is it stiffer? Is it not stiffer? Um, it's really hard to show that. But I, I'm gonna sh tell you exactly what I kind of went through. I selected and pre-washed, now this is all pre-washed fabric. We always want you to pre-wash your batik fabric before you work on any project, even if it's a test, because when you're making a bag or a jacket or whatever it happens to be, you would be pre-washing your fabric. And if you haven't read any of our care instructions for pre-washing, um, there's, a, there's a link below in the description of this video click through to our website and read all about the care instructions for any of our batik fabric, okay? So these are pre-washed. And the reason I'm saying that is it really removes that extra le level of, I don't know, that feeling of that batik and that waxy feel and a little bit of stiffness. It does soften the fabric up just a little bit. And so it's really worth it to pre-wash your fabric. So I took our sample fabric that I have been working with when I made the market bag which is the colorway of Dusty Topaz. And this is motif here is flocked together. This motif we do not offer in our 8.6 ounce canvas. We made the Gardenese Divine motif in this colorway instead. So I just want you to know that if you're looking for the specific one, we have the color just in a different motif. Then I selected to match our cotton uh, hand-dyed Copen Blue is the is what I put on the back, okay? Now, my goal was to pre-quilt this to show what it would quilt like and how it would feel with wool batting as if I were going to make a garment. So a quilted jacket or a vest or whatever you would make out of a quilted wool as your batting. Or you can, you can assume that the same results 
will occur if you use a bamboo, um, even different weights of, of wool or poly or cotton. You'll get the same feel. So half the, okay, let me step back. The width of our canvas is about 58 to 60 inches wide. And so a portion of it was quilted with wool batting. The other half of this I quilted with soft and stable. Now the soft and stable, of course, is not for garments. That is just far too stiff. It is for handbags, backpacks, totes, accessories, um, uh, placemats, tablecloths, uh, outdoor furniture covers, whatever it happens to be that needs a little bit of stability, a really kind of a stiff stability, that is what soft and stable will give you, okay? So half of this is soft and stable and half of this is the wool. And I wanted it on the machine all at once to just let the edge to edge design that I selected, which is bubbles. I don't know if you can see the bubbles in here, but it's just like oval, big, loose oval circles. And I think the tiniest circle is probably about three and a half inches across. And the largest is probably six inches across. So it's pretty loose. It's not a super, super tight quilting. And here's how it turned out. <laughs> it's really amazing. It is, this is the wool side, okay? So I would hesitate at not, I would not hesitate at all in incorporating this weight of um, canvas in a quilted jacket. Not at all. This would be perfectly fine. It feels good. It does scrunch up a little bit. It's not completely stiff. And um, I think this fabric, or now here is the five ounce. It kind of curls up a little bit more, but this is the five ounce canvas that I made my tamarack jacket out of with a cotton coordinating back. And this is wool batting as well. But this kind of, it, it, you can crunch it up a little bit more than you can the uh, six or 8.6 ounce. This is just a little thicker. And of course, when you think about any one of these projects or anything that I've done with the heavier canvas, it is the weight. So when I say heavy, it is weight. It weighs a lot more. And so it will feel heavier on you but it doesn't have any additional, doesn't seem like it has any additional level of, um, I don't know, structure or, or stiffness to it, okay? So, so that is the answer to that question. I would hesi not hesitate at all to put this into a quilted jacket. I think it would be perfect. Now, let's talk a little bit about, I'm gonna set this down here, the, soft and stable side of this project. It is very stiff. So when you put this in your hand to scrunch it up, it's, it's pretty stiff. So if I were going to use this fabric to make my market bag, remember this market bag? This is the same exact canvas. This has no stabilizer and it's just one layer of canvas. So it's stiff. Um, but if you made that market bag using this quilted canvas, it would stand up on its own and it would be actually a very nice tote bag or market bag. It would be beautiful. But remember one thing, the stabilizer, which is the soft and stable, is what's giving you that stiffness. The fabric that you use as your main outside fabric and your lining it's either going to be the 8.6, which is really, how do I say it, durable. It's, it's a thicker uh, canvas and it's probably going to wear and last longer. Um, but again, it depends on how you use any of these items and how rugged you are with them. Um, if they are dragged, if they're rubbed, if they're worn, if you use them for 20 years, everything has a, has its own life. I just want to show you exactly what 
you can do with the fabric and quilting it on a long arm is a piece of cake. Let me talk to you a little bit about the quilting. And I think the same concept will work working on a domestic machine as it did when I put this on our long arm. So with the batting as the soft and stable, well, or the wool, this was one big edge to edge quilting project. And simply, I did that simply to save time. And so the, the motif being the champagne bubbles, it is a larger motif, as I had mentioned before. So the space in between the quilting is anywhere from, I don't know, two inches, three inches to six inches apart. And that is quite loose. I previously had quilted a, a crosshatch quilt. Let me show you this. This is five ounce canvas with cotton on the back with soft and stable. And I had um, quilted up this cross hatching design. This is much, I believe that regardless of the canvas weight, it's so much stiffer because the quilting itself is so much tighter. It is, I mean, there's only less than an inch between every single stitch line of this particular um, design. So cross hatching really gives you a pretty stiff feel to that could be as stiff on a cotton as it is on the 8.6 ounce canvas itself. Um, and then I used a size 16 needle, which is typically what I use when I'm working on canvas on our long arm, as well as um, so fine thread. So that is always stays pretty consistent when we are quilting your custom pre-quilted uh, fabric orders. So on our website right now, under the pre-quilted options, we have our cotton. So if you would like us to pre-quilt the cotton main fabric with cotton lining, we have that available for soft and stable or the wool and or bamboo. We have the five ounce canvas. And what I have to add relatively quickly here is the 8.6 ounce. I really just wanted to play with it before I um, uh, added it to our website and there's really absolutely no difference in any of the quilting. So have fun quilting this um, heavier canvas. It's just really amazing. So that was um, our test that I wanted to show you regarding what it feels like, how it quilts, and any issues you may have with working with the 8.6 ounce canvas when it comes to just straight quilting, okay? But quilting is only a part of how we put together these bags and these jackets. There's still a lot of finishing work that needs to be done. So what I decided to do is, remember a couple weeks ago, I just put on the sewing machine a 10 inch square of soft and stable and um, two layers of this uh, canvas, the heavier canvas. And I was just running stitches through the sewing machine. And what I did is I took that piece of fabric, finished quilting it, and decided I was going to try making this quick zip case. Remember these cute little fun pencil cases? This is a pattern that is by Annie. And it's just a, it's a wonderful way to use up scraps. I can tell you that. Wonderful way to use up scraps. And if you have um, any pieces of zipper left over, it's just a great way to do this. And they're great gifts. We are in the gifting season. And this would definitely be a great gift. And so a while back, I put together a little tutorial on our YouTube channel of how to make one of these little pencil cases. And this is made with strips of our nuance gradation fabric and we have a kit for this. It's really super fun and it's just simply piecing together strips of the gradation colors and following the pattern instructions to add the zipper and you add a little bit of binding in the bottom to make sure that everything stays uh, square and really perfect. It's a really fun project. And so this is the cotton version. So we've got cotton on the outside, cotton on the inside with soft and stable. And it is, you know, it kind of squishes up a, a little bit, but it's the soft and stable that keeps it with its beautiful shape. 
okay? And there are little um, crease lines here that you stitch to make sure that it will make that square shape. They're really super cute. I also, um, we had given Annie and her team some of our sample canvas. This is the 5.0 ounce, and she made some of these zip cases as well. So this is the Phoenix Rainbow fabric, and inside is another cotton. Again, a yellow zipper. This is the... Um, Oh uh, gosh, do I even remember the, the colorway? Oh my goodness. Um, buttercream or butter something. Anyway, it is so cute. And so this is made with the canvas. And again, it keeps its structure with each one of the fold lines or crease lines stitched right into the fabric before you finish putting it together. So I was thinking of these little cases when I decided I was going to use up that that little 10 inch square that I had quilted on the machine here. So this is how it turned out. And I wanna share with you one thing first before I go through my little, uh, the results of my little test. The one thing to always remember to do, remember I showed you these little crease lines here? You have to stitch these lines to make sure that it keeps its shape. I did not do that <laughs> for my little tester. And so it really doesn't have the shape that it should have. But again, I'm starting with a very small piece of, of um, canvas, which was measuring 10 inches by 10 inches, which is much smaller than those cute little pencil cases. Let me show you the video on how I made this cute little zip up case. I'm gonna take you through the steps that I went through to create this cute little zipper pouch, zipper case, and you can put basically anything in it. And what I did is I went and I read by Annie's pattern really quickly and then just sort of followed the steps using this 10 by 10 inch pre-quilted soft and stable canvas piece of fabric. And remember, this canvas is on both sides of the soft and stable, so it's pretty heavy. And so what I wanted to do was make sure that it wasn't too difficult to put the zipper on this canvas. And so I've already attached the zipper to one side. And what you do is you put right sides together. So kind of a generous quarter inch and make sure that the canvas itself is kind of inside the edge of the zipper so that when we fold it over and top stitch, we're creating kind of a casing for the edge of the canvas, the wrong side of the canvas. And this is when it gets kind of thick. But what I'm doing now is trying to fold the zipper down. Now it's top stitched. And now it's time to take the canvas itself and attach it to the other side of the zipper. So we're gonna create a little bit of a tube here. So I'm just gonna stitch along again, just it's actually a generous quarter inch and you can either make it more than a quarter inch or less. It's whatever your preference is, but I just like to make sure that the fabric that I'm attaching the zipper to is inside the outside edge of that zipper. And now it's time to open up this zipper to flatten out that second edge so that we can top stitch the zipper down against that canvas and make sure that it lays flat and that we finish that really, really nicely. And so I open it up as wide as we possibly can, opening that zipper and top stitch on the wrong side of the zipper right along the outer edge. And I just use my finger to kind of make sure that I'm pushing that canvas down underneath the zipper to finish it off. I am a backstitcher, so I'm always starting with a backstitch and then finishing with a backstitch as well. 
And so I turned it the other way here just so that we could make sure that it looks okay. So this is the right side of our little tube that has the zipper on it. And then I'm going to turn it wrong sides out one more time because we have to finish off our side seams and finish off the bottom. And so what I'm going to do here is I am marking the center of the canvas because we're going to center the zipper, flatten this whole thing out and center the zipper on the bottom where I, where I put the pin. Okay. And then I just use clips to keep those flat and stitch again, a quarter inch away from the outer edge. And as you can see, I haven't cut the zipper off yet. Make sure though, when you get to this step, if you're going to do any of these zipper cases that you make sure that the zipper pull is inside the edges of the canvas. Otherwise you're going to, you're going to keep that zipper pull outside, which is not what we want to do here. We're finishing off the side seams on both sides. And again, I'm back stitching. Clip your threads. I'm a thread clipper, so I like to keep everything pretty neat. And now it's time to cut off our zippers, the edges of the zippers, keeping everything kind of flush to the, the side seams. And what I did here is I just took some of our can, uh, petite cotton. This is hand dyed lake actually, and it's, it coordinates really nicely. I had this um, sitting around and I just cut a strip and I don't know how long it is, but I wanted to make sure it was like two and a quarter inches wide. And this is the binding. So fold it in half. And then I sewed that to one side of the side seam. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking and pulling that folded edge around to the other side of the pouch, tucking in the edges, and then I'm going to top stitch. This is where clips really come in handy because what it's doing is it's helping me kind of push the binding together with the canvas so that I can finish the top stitching here on this side of the, of the um, little pouch. And back stitching again. It looks like I'm making this really, really super flat pouch, but it won't be um, because we will eventually create the sides and the bottom to make it look like a rectangle. So this is the second side. And again, adding the binding strip. So a quarter inch away from the outside edge. And you know, it, one thing about this too is remember that when I quilted this fabric a couple weeks ago, both of the sides, the, what you would typically call the lining and the main fabric are both the 8.6 ounce canvas. So this is a pretty thick piece of uh, fabric that I'm adding a zipper to and adding binding to. And there's multiple layers of the binding simply because it's a folded piece of batik cotton. So now I'm gonna top stitch here after folding the binding around to the other side and tucking in our sides. And I really didn't find that it was overly exerting the sewing machine with all of these layers and the density of the heavier canvas. Okay, so now I think what I did here, if I recall, is yep, I'm going to create, you know, I didn't measure. I could have measured my points here to make it a little bit more of a square pencil case or zippered case, but I just kind of estimated. I wasn't trying, I'm not trying to really do anything fancy here. I'm just trying to work with this canvas to see if there are any issues with stitching through so many layers of the canvas and so many layers of the binding. And so I just kind of estimated about, I think it was seven eighths of an inch in from the points here when I'm making my corners for this little zipper case. So I'm going to turn it around. So I have my 
right side out and I am kind of cleaning up any of the threads. The other thing I didn't do is I didn't add like a little simple zipper pull or zipper tab to this. Um, I just wanted to kind of create a really, really z simple zipper case here. And so I turned it around, pushed my binding through to the end and look, I love it. And this is how it turned out. It is so cute. And of course it has a little bit of a different shape because I started with a square that was 10 by 10 and these are a different dimension. Um, but my goal was to attach a zipper to the canvas and also with the soft and stable in it and also to add a little bit of binding to see how thick the canvas would get with the two layers of canvas and the binding. The only thing I have to say about this that's different than the canvas version and the cotton version, of course, besides the fact that each one of these is a little thinner than the other and thinner than the 8.6 ounce canvas, is that it, it, ju it just feels so stiff, which is really what you're going to want when you're working with the canvas to make accessory bags or travel bags or purses or backpacks or whatever, or whatever you're, you're creating. And so it really does add that little extra feel of ruggedness. And I'm going to try my best to take a photograph of each one of these. So you can kind of see the finish difference. Um, but the other way to know this too is to request a swatch. Request a swatch of cotton, and it can be any color, of the five ounce canvas and the 8.6 ounce canvas and feel each one. And you're going to, going to see the difference and you're gonna feel the difference and you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I think my goal was to just know that there wouldn't be any concerns or issues or difficulties um, with the canvas. And then it just becomes what you're comfortable sewing, what your machine is comfortable kind of engaging in, <laughs> whether or not you have an industrial machine or not, it doesn't really matter. I think you, because this is not an industrial juki, I think you can um, pretty much sew anything. And this isn't super thick. The backpack that I had made previously, I think I showed you, with the canvas, the um, binding on the inside had to have been a good quarter inch to almost three eighths of an inch thick. And then you have to use some form of a hammer or something to try to make it as squished and together as possible in order for it to, to um, sew nicely underneath your needle. Um, so those were my tests. And I think there's a lot more that can be done. I mean, I think we can add front pockets. I think we can really create a bag out of the canvas and whether it is quilted or not, I think you're going to absolutely love the feel and durability of the 8.6 ounce canvas. Now, if you are not looking to quilt anything, the, you know, something, I think sometimes I look at the, the heavier canvas and I say to myself, I've got so many different patterns and projects that don't require quilting. It is perfect for that. And when I started thinking about non-quilting project options, I decided, well, the one thing that I really want to understand is interfacing, fusible interfacing, because a lot of the patterns, um, let's take, take the range backpack pattern as an example. This um, is shown with heavier canvas that is not quilted. It uses different stabilizers like uh, fusible interfacing, fusible fleece, um, things like that to add a layer of stability to it. And so I thought, well, let's do, let's do a little bit of test. So I took the uh, Shape Flex, which is, I think that's SF 101, and I fused it to cotton 
five ounce canvas and 8.6 ounce canvas. And so, first of all, there's no, no concerns whatsoever. It fuses itself to all three. Just, you know, make sure that you are following the instructions for the interfacing itself. Or if you use a different type of interfacing that is heavier or lighter, just follow those instructions because we want to make sure that it adheres properly. And so the, the cotton itself, I'm going to stand up here. This is the Gardenista by Napa cotton. And I have fused that SF-101. And it is, you know, it's a nice fusing. It's got a nice weight to it. And... Um, I use this interfacing a lot when I'm making like a classic shirt for putting that into a collar, um, the placket or whatever, just to add a little bit of stability. And this can be used for any bag project as well. Absolutely. The five ounce canvas is of course a little bit stiffer and it adheres just fine. Nothing's peeling back on it. And um, it, it really gives it a nice, feel even when you wrinkle it it really is I mean it pops out without any pressing I mean it's very very nice and you can hear that kind of a canvassy feel to it then I took one of our uh, 8.6 ounce canvas and again we've got that fused and it really gives it an amazing feel it adds to that stability and I think even in a market bag would add a little bit of ruggedness to that bag. Um, so there's no issues with, with fusing to the canvas either. Um, I didn't think there would be, but I wanted to try that just to see if it would add too much stiffness, but it's not. It, I think it would be wonderful as the stabilizer for any of these bags that really don't even show them as a quilted bag. So the range backpack, which is by Noodlehead, would be great with the heavier canvas. And that is one of the options that she has on here as well, is canvas. The um, Buckhorn, we have this one as well in stock. Uh, this one just looks like a fun project, a tote bag or a backpack, a couple of different sizes and um, all the different accessories, but yes, SF-101 is the interfacing that she recommends on here as well, plus fusible fleece or a foam if you want something a little bit stiffer, okay, which is your soft and stable, or I think she recommends, no, she does. There's a Pella 987 or by Annie Soft and Stable, which is fantastic. The other one that I think would be great as a computer bag for me <laughs> is the making backpack project. Um, I wanna get a little different uh, handle. So I am looking for some cotton webbing to get that in stock as well. And some different leather options uh, for working with um, handles and straps and things like that as well. But that would be fantastic in our heavier canvas. I think it would be just so much fun. Now, when we had um, shared some of our earliest canvas with Annie, she, I really want to share this as well. These are the snapshot bags that she sewed up as um, a sample bags. And here's the front of that pattern. It's called snapshot. These are not quilted. And what I think is really neat about these two bags, and I was looking at them again after doing my little test with the zipper and binding and all of that with the quilted canvas, is that it makes it a little, when it's not quilted, you still have the stable. I mean, it's very sturdy, very stable because they're soft and stable inside. Um, but attaching your canvas to a zipper, for an example, and then aligning separate from the main portion of the bag, it's a lot easier to stitch your zipper in place without a quilted piece of fabric being attached to the zipper. And so I like these options as well, where the bag is not pre-quilted and it gives it just a really sleek style to it. Um, 
And so this is really a great way to use the canvases without being quilted. And so this is the five ounce canvas, but I think it would be perfect way to use the 8.6 ounce canvas as well. And that's Snapshot, and that is a pattern by Annie. And those kits are available on our website as well. And right now they're only available with the 5.0 ounce canvas. Um, and so I have a lot of work ahead to me to get everything converted or added as an option for the heavier canvas as well. And I think, you know, when you look at, I love this pattern, and I think I referenced this uh, a couple weeks ago as well, is the night and day uh, bag. This is the tote bag portion of that pattern. And this is the night and day here. And it's just a great way to use a canvas. And this could be the 8.6 ounce canvas or the five. This is the lighter weight canvas that we used in this particular bag. Um, and the quilting here is a little bit close together. So you probably wouldn't need anything that close in stitch to, you know, for the 8.6 ounce canvas, but um, it is just such a cute, cute bag. But that's a great way to use it as well. And there's not a lot of complexity because everything is stitched together without binding. And that's a, it's just fun. It'll give you an idea of what it's like to sew with a heavier canvas. So think about all the different projects that um, or patterns that you may have that would be perfect for a canvas. The other one I wanna share with you, of course, is the very first project that I made with um, by Annie, and that is the Clam Up Bags. Again, a great holiday gift. You can make so many of these, and it's simply the zipper, pre-quilted fabric, and then you finish the inside um, and they open super wide. So I've made three different sizes of the clam up bags. This is the large. I have to remember how many different sizes there are. This one was not quilted. This is our Medora Flora grape fabric. And inside of this, we have vinyl. So we put the vinyl inside this particular one. And that's a great way to keep you, the inside of these bags, if you're using them for cosmetics and such, it's a great way to keep that stuff clean is um, with the vinyl. And then of course the super, super small one, which we can use as a cute little gift or um, use this for your coins or jewelry um, or all your little special things. This is just such a cute little bag. And I think if I was to remember right, I started with the tiniest and worked my way up. I don't know why I do that, but I did. <laughs> so these are super, super fun. Put this back in here. Oh, and one more. The other small, wonderful, wonderful introduction to working with canvas, working with cotton, working with any of the zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, are the Peacekeeper project bags. And we have several of these kits available. And um, for example, this kit has the pattern, it has zippers, it has um, the mesh and soft and stable all put together in them. And it's just really a great way to learn how to work with each one of those components so that if you pick up a, a larger project bag, you already know how to work with each one of them. So they're really, really fun little projects. Now, I have to pick out my own next larger project that I'm going to make, but I do believe it's going to be this one. It's gonna be the making backpack because I just think that that is the cutest bag and it will be fun to work with the heavier canvas and um, not quilt it and to see how everything turns out with that um, structure of a bag. So let me know if you have any questions after hearing all of this information, what other questions you have with working with any of the canvas, either weights or the petite cotton and um, things that I should try, things that I should test for you. And we will get that on a future Fabric Friday.
One of the heavier canvases um, is in the motif of Garden East Divine, and this is the shade of Napa, and it is one of your favorites. I can I can honestly say it is probably ordered the most. And one question that we did receive the other day is what would a light fabric and a darker fabric, what would be really great coordinates for this particular fabric? And so what I'm going to do is show you some different cotton options that would I think would be perfect for these uh, for this colorway. So let me know what you think and I'm just going to share this with you as kind of an option. I'll hang this up here and show you. One of the fabrics that's a really great light fabric is Medora Flora and this is the shade of Flax. I'm going to give you a couple of options. The next is Sand Surf and this is the shade, this is the motif of Phoenix and the colorway of Sand Surf. It's a little bit golder, and this has hints of the greens that are in the Napa color. But one of our most recent additions is Sacred Branch is the motif, and I think I have to open this up a little bit further. And the colors in it are kind of a light, it's called Jardin, and it's kind of a lighter dusty green with burgundy flowing through that motif. Now, wouldn't that be an amazing light shade, like a lining to go with the Garden East Divine Napa? I think that would be just gorgeous. Because when I look sometimes at something that's really super light, yes, it would be a great lining. Any of these would work, but I just think that this particular green, the, the undertones of the sagey green named Jardin um, would be really beautiful. And then I'm going to leave those here. One of the darker shades that I think would be amazing with this as say a coordinate or handles on a bag um, or external binding. This is the sacred branch motif. And again, look at that purple. Isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful purple? It's just gorgeous with that. I think it really brings out the tones that are in the Napa. You know, you can pick any one. You could pick the Copen Blue. You could pick a darker green. But this one, for some reason, makes each one of these really go together nicely. Now I'm gonna switch this out so that you can see what the Copen would look like. Now I'm wearing Copen, so you can probably see that colorway, but even just a hand dyed fabric, and that's the Copen, you have to let me know which you like best, the Copen blue with these two, or Okay, that's your quiz for today. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. But if you have a question with what fabrics would really, really go with any of the canvas, or if someday we're working with our rayon or the linen, um, just give us a question and we'll show you live what they, what they all look like together. And sometimes it's really super simple to just take a picture and show you, but it's really great to see it um, this way so that you can see all the different options together. Oh, I hope you guys have a really, really great Friday. Have a really great start to this weekend. And next weekend is Thanksgiving. So be on the lookout for an email. So make sure you're on our email newsletter list for our annual thankful sale. That will be starting here shortly and run through the Monday after Thanksgiving. So this is the time of the year that we really wanna say thank you to you and to be thankful for everything that, that we have. And we just love sharing everything boutique, everything that is, oh, I don't know, project related. It's just so much fun. And we really want you to enjoy this weekend. And oh, by the way, um, there will not be a Fabric Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving, as well, we're going to be with family uh, in New Jersey 
but we'll be back the following the week after Thanksgiving for another Fabric Friday. So enjoy your weekend and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing. <laughs>